Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess. Welcome to our third lab exercise on raster analysis. Here we're going to see how to generate a hillshade raster from a DEM using the ArcGIS Pro Hillshade tool. Now these days hillshades are mostly used for aesthetic purposes because they clearly show the topographic shape of the land by showing how the landscape is illuminated by the sun. If a raster cell faces the sun directly, it gets a maximum value of 255, and values decrease to zero as it turns away from the sun. If it faces more than 90 degrees away from the sun, it gets the minimum hillshade value of zero. Then we often use a black to white color ramp to display it. Now, hillshades are cool, and they actually show the shape of the land a lot better than the original DEM does. Now, one interesting bit of trivia about hillshades is that we often place the sun in a location where it never actually is, or at least in the northern hemisphere. Putting the sun in an accurate location often creates an optical illusion where the landscape appears inverted. And take a look at the lecture video 3 in this module for more details on this, and plus some ways we can modify hillshades to make them look even more cool. Now, in this demonstration, I'm going to be using ArcGIS Pro version 3.3.2. Now, before we start, there is one thing to consider before calculating hillshade. If your DEM is in geographic coordinates, meaning that they're in latitude and longitude units, then you can't calculate an accurate hillshade. The hillshade tool, at least as of late 2024, has no option for using geodesic methods. Therefore, if you really need the hillshade to be accurate, you'll need to project it first. Uh, fortunately, most people are only creating the hillshade for the visual effect, and even an inaccurate hillshade still looks pretty good. Now, you'll also need to know whether your DEM elevation units are the same as your coordinate system linear units, and if they're not, you'll need to enter a conversion factor. So, for example, if your elevation units are in feet and your coordinate system is in meters, you'll have to convert from feet to meters. Okay, let's get started. First thing, the Hillshade tool is available in a few extensions in ArcGIS Pro. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst extension, so let's start by making sure the license is turned on. Just come to the project, come down to Licensing, and scroll down through this list of extensions you have. And if you see Spatial Analyst turned on, then you're good to go. Otherwise, you'll have to configure your licensing options to turn that Spatial Analyst extension on. Okay, next up, let's add the data to it. Uh, we're going to use this uh, DEM right here we see in the picture, plus this uh, management unit polygon. We're not actually using the management unit in this exercise, but it just kind of gives a reference for it. So we're going to use the DEM. Oh, it's in the class data in the raster functions folder. We're going to use DEM and semester D unit. Let's add both of those data sets to our map. Cool, cool. Now we just fire up the Hillshade tool. It's in the analysis, then the toolbox. Just type the word Hillshade like I have here. We're going to use the Spatial Analyst version. Tool's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is put in the DEM, give a name for our new Hillshade raster, and make sure we know where it's going. Pick where we want the sun to be. The azimuth is the compass direction. It can range between 0 and 360 degrees. And altitude is the angle up, and it can range from 0 to 90 degrees. 0 degrees puts the sun on the horizon. 90 degrees puts the sun straight overhead. Now, you can also model shadows if you want. This means that any part of the landscape that would be in shadow of some larger topographic feature will get a hillshade value of 0, regardless of how directly it faces the sun. Now, this Z factor, this is important. Z factors are for converting your elevation units into the same units as your horizontal coordinate system. Now, I happen to know that my DEM is projected into a meter-based coordinate system. I also happen to know that my elevation units are in meters. So the Z factor conversion factor would just be a 1. Now, if your elevation units are, say, in feet, and your DEM is projected into meters, then you'll need to enter a value of 0 0.3048 to convert from meters to feet. Now, like I said, it's in this example, everything's in meters, so I'd use a Z factor of 1. Now, while we're here, I just wanted to show you something that you might see occasionally. If your DEM is in latitude-longitude coordinates, I'm just going to jump over to this other map where I have one like that. So I have a DEM that's projecting the latitude-longitude coordinates. If I brought this into the Hillshade tool, 
then ArcGIS Pro is suggesting a Z factor of this. You might notice that that is very close to zero. It, you know, it's 0 0.00000899, so it's, it's way down there. This Z factor is actually equal to the degrees of latitude corresponding to a linear distance of one meter going north to south. So, so it's just a tiny fraction of a degree. Now remember, using this value will not give you an accurate hillshade because the hillshade tool doesn't use geodesic methods. But if you use this value on a geographic raster, latitude, longitude, coordinates, it usually looks just fine if you're only interested in the visual quality. Now, if you'd like to know more about the problems we get when we fail to use geodesic methods with latitude, longitude data, take a look at the fourth lecture video in this module and we discuss several common issues we have with raster analysis including that issue with geodesic methods but like i said uh, hill shades are usually just used for aesthetics so let's pop back over here put in this dem and all of this looks good i'm just going to hit run and that's all there is to it so now we have this cool raster that clearly shows the topographic shape of the land. Now, personally, I like to put the DEM over it quite often when I'm making maps. So I put the DEM over it. I set it to be partially transparent. Select the layer, come up to raster layer, maybe give it a 50% transparency. And now I get the color of the DEM, which shows me the elevation, and I can see the hillshade underneath. So it, I just like that effect. All right, thanks so much, everybody. In our next lab exercise, we're going to look at some ways to calculate curvature on the landscape, and I hope to see you there. Take care. Bye-bye.